Welcome. We're going to go over a free tool called Engage. This is a very useful tool when you are dealing with chart data and you don't necessarily have the raw numbers to go with the chart. You may be dealing with a textbook, you may be dealing with some kind of journal article or something else where you literally only have graphical data, no numbers. And so this is a program called Engage and you can open it and you can go to import. And so we're going to pull in this simple chart and this is a coefficient of drag chart given a Reynolds number. It's very simple, only a single line. And you notice also this log log. So there's a little wizard that gives you some help. We only have one curve. Normally you'd have maybe several curves so you could name them, give them names. We're just gonna call it curve one for now. Okay, now this checklist gives you a list of things to do. So the first thing we're going to do is identify this origin of the chart. We'll say right there. And that origin is going to be on the x axis, 1 e to negative 4, and on the y axis, 1 e to negative 3. We're going to pick a second point far out here in the x axis, and that's going to be 1 e to 7 and 1 e to negative 3. And our final point. is going to be 1e e to negative 4, 1e e to 5. <clears throat> so now what we've done is we've established the axes on the chart and engage, once it knows these axes, sometimes there's some tilt or some skew, but it can then use the other points we should select to find out where the line is, where the points are that you are, are adding to the chart. So we'll go here and now we're going to add the curve point tool. And you'll notice that curve one is selected. If we had more than one line that we were adding data for, well, we would still have different curves to select here. So once we have that selected, we have these points available. And now we can go, we can zoom in and we can just select points. And, and this chart's pretty handy because it already has these dots there. If we didn't have that, we would just have to eyeball it and do the best that we can. So right here, I'm just gonna go and select these dots on the chart. Now I don't have to because this is a very linear chart. I could probably grab right here. And it won't really matter in this chart because it's, it's a very straight line. And maybe if I start changing curvature a little bit, I'll grab some more points. There's a little bit of art to this. So there we go. I am grabbing some points. There's some more curvature here. So I'll, of course I'll add more points to capture that curvature. And that last end, it uh, just levels off. So boom. We are done selecting points for this chart. Now what we're going to do is we are going to change the axes. So we'll go to axes checker. Oops, sorry. Let's see, coordinates, there we go. <clears throat> so the X coordinates are in a log form. So we will select log and the Y coordinates are also in log form. So we'll select log. And this is extremely helpful because in my career, I've seen so many people misread log charts. I've done it and sometimes I check it or I sometimes I actually notice it and catch it. I've seen other people make mistakes with reading log charts and it's not caught until something is built and then you say, oops, that's 10 times smaller than it needs to be. That has happened. Okay, so we have log log chart defined and now what we will do is we will go to export and we will save as a type CSV and it just picks the name of the, as the image reference. So there we go. So now I will go to where that is and open that CSV file in Excel. Excel, all CSV stands for is comma separated values. And so you'll notice here we have got the X values and the y values of the curve one. So I'll grab those and I will bring them over here to my Excel file that I was using. Now I've already gone through and I've added 
this chart, which is what we grabbed it for. And this is, I'm going to show you a, a really a simple method to make sure that your data is correct. So we will go and I'll go to inserts, my own chart. It's going to be a line chart. There we go. And what I will take is I'll cut that and I'll go to format chart area, chart options. Let's see, fill, picture, texture, fill, and choose clipboard. So boom, I have now got my image using a clipboard tool as the background for my chart. So now I can go and I can say select data for my chart. I'll add a series and I'm just going to call it curve one because that's what we called it before. And it doesn't really matter if we only have, we only have a single curve. My X values, I will select. Then my Y values, I will also select. <clears throat> there we go. And of course, you notice it gets kind of wonky and that is strictly because now Excel has this in a linear chart style. So I'll format axis or format axis <clears throat> and I'll change this to a logarithmic scale. And now it's very important that I then set the bounds of the data. So minimum is one e to negative four, maximum is one e to seven, which it looked like it already had that. So that's good. I'll then go to the other axis here. If I can find, there we go. It was hidden, format axis. And I will do the same thing here. Make sure it's a logarithmic scale. And the minimum is one e to negative three, and the maximum is one e to the five. Okay, so now my chart has the same axes, and you'll notice this line now resembles that. And the gimmick here is, let me, let me expand the chart area a little bit. The gimmick here is to then manipulate the bounds of the chart so that the axis, so that the border, where you define the start and end of the, of the axes matches having some problems here and the problem I'm having is that this cannot go all the way because this chart area there are a few ways to fix this I'm just going to say well do I really care about values past here and I'm going to take this value and I'm going to say format axis and I'll change that maximum to be 10 times lower so now I can take this chart bound sorry I can take this chart bound and move it on 10 to the sixth line, right around there. So you'll see if we do our job here and if we match our axes as well as we could, you will notice these lines, these data points now match up and overlay that chart way better than you could do just by hand and by eyeballing it. And the other thing you can do here, just to make it more obvious, is you can go back to the chart area and go to the fill here and change the transparency of that chart area. So now I can change it so that background that where we, we got the data from is less dark and now I can see those data points and I can also see the axes and you know you can go with the axis options and change the let's see go to format axis oh go to format axis and then we can choose you know where the where the charts go or sorry where the axes are displayed that sort of thing um, let's see if we can set this to 1e negative 3 put that down there same thing with this, we can put that at over there, or we can put it at 20 negative four to put it at the end. And of course, when you do that, then it's gonna change, change some things. So let's, let's undo here, make sure, okay. So we changed it back. We can just set this, this axis options back to the maximum axis value. Oh, no. We'll just leave it alone. For right now, I just want to show 
this is one way that you can go through and get extremely good data from a chart that is extremely usable. And that's all I have for now.